Welcome to the shortwave radio channel and we're going to talk a little bit about solar activity and things that you need to understand in solar activity because throughout the weekend I've seen a lot of posts of well propagation is bad it's solar flares and um, then there's like oh yeah the, the, there was a big solar flare and I've even seen the um, error message I will call it like this because it was not the case even the um, Hurricane WatchNet had posted on its page, oh, there was a major flare this morning, and that's why propagation is good. There was no major flare at any time during the Hurricane WatchNet. And that is the interesting part, is that there's a lot of information that is kind of not really either verified or checked properly. Um, one of the things, so two pages, I will post the link to you guys can check, is solarham.net, which has a lot of information about what's happening, current events, and the current solar flare threats, and so on. And you can check out the activity. Um, as you see here, solar flares have a index A, B, C, M, and X. The higher up on this chart, the bigger the solar flares. If you look at flares, okay, yesterday, midday, there was one C flare, almost M threshold, but it was still a C flare. These are smaller flares. Now, solar flares, okay, when they erupt from the sun, actually do have an impact immediately. So, solar flares will typically, uh, f eight minutes later, because that's a speed of light, eight minutes later, when the solar flare has erupted, the Earth will be bombarded by a certain number of particles. This does, for effect, destroy the ionosphere. So absorption will be bigger or maximum usable frequency will suddenly drop. And that will show when a flare happens. The problem is that a lot of people are in the impression that when a solar flare happens, so we should probably not have any propagation for the next few hours or days or not with solar flares. Solar flares might increase noise level a little bit when it happens. Um, solar flares will degrade propagation when it happens. But it's a short event. A solar flare will destroy the ionosphere a little bit. Depending on how big it is, the bigger the solar flare, the more the ionosphere will suffer. You might lose your signals you were listening to suddenly in this, the, the scale of a few minutes. But this lasts anywhere from a few minutes to a few hours in the really, really big solar flares. But it's not a day-long event in general. It's just from a few minutes. So C flares, for example, it might last, you know, half an hour, 45 minutes. But it's not something that lasts long. Um, and a major flare is at least in the M scale or the X scale in general. So here, if you look at the this uh, chart there was a midday c flare it was still c flare it didn't cross into the m flare you know it's not that there's small small flares but there's still you know the there is some effect it, and i'm sure there was some effect when that happened but it's short-lived you know probably a half an hour to an hour later everything was back to normal so we have to stop thinking oh well you know there's solar flares today so that's why propagation isn't good uh, all day that's not the case it doesn't work like that um, and there's a lot more to propagation than just that. And sometimes we don't hear anything. There's uh, way other reasons why you might not hear um, a lot of the bands, including the time you're listening. You know, um, noon, local noon or 1 p.m. in the afternoon has always been a time where it's the worst shortwave time to listen. That's always been the case. It's the way the absorption is higher at the midday and so on. That's why shortwave in general, we say, hey, you know, late afternoon, evening, night, so often is better. Um, so solar flares, you can check out solarham.net. Check out the chart here that tells you what, you know, when solar flares happen. When there's a small solar flare, there might be an immediate, you know, drop in signal, but it usually is short-lived. That said, if you see an X flare, it's possible that that destruction of the ionosphere lasts for several hours. But on smaller flares, 
Usually half an hour to an hour, everything comes back to normal. Sometimes it's just a few minutes. So you can check out solarham.net. There's this chart that continues and shows you activity. There is a huge sunspot on <clears throat> the sun, sorry, which is this big, uh, huge sunspot here. We see it even better on the uh, solar uh, spaceweather.com website. You know, really big sunspots like this usually are often crackling with little flares um, and, and arbor the energy for really big ones if, uh, if, if things go bad. So you can check that out. So, you know, it's the bad side of higher solar activity, more sunspots, more chances of solar flares happening also. But remember that solar flares, once again, <coughs> have a limited uh, time of, of you know, propagation fading. The destruction of the ionosphere is never very long. It's not like geomagnetic storms. And that is going to be the next video. We're going to talk about the geomagnetic storms. And that is a different thing. And of course, there could be a mix of maybe there's a small solar flare, but there could be some activity and some geomagnetic activity. But um, we see that in the uh, colors. Here you see the colors of the uh, possible geomagnetic forecast and so on. We're going to check that out. There's the chart here of the K index. The K index is a great indication of how the uh, geomagnetic field is behaving. Uh, so that's going to be the next video. <coughs> Spaceweather.com for all sorts of information. A big sunspot, a uh, big solar flare happens something, usually within minutes. Um, if not in within the hour, there's a, uh, an article or there's a little something about it. And solarham.net is also updated uh, often when there's something happening, particularly something bad happening. So uh, here we see that August 28th, there was something which was an M flare that was bigger. Uh, that was definitely bigger but that was 28th 28th was saturday um so in august 29th which is um you know 24 hours ago more than 24 hours ago so two websites are going to be in the description below the video and the next we're going to talk about geomagnetic activity and its effect on propagation if you enjoy my videos please subscribe give us thumbs up thank you for watching